Hello, I'm Gavin Horgan, Headmaster of Millfield School in Somerset, the largest co-educational boarding school in the UK. Welcome to the Millfield Way podcast. Here, you'll hear from teachers, coaches and students from Millfield and Millfield Prep School. Millfield is traditionally different, and this is the Millfield Way. Hello and welcome to the Millfield Way podcast in conversation today with Year 9 students Tristan, Luke and Alex. Uh, My name's Liz Webb and I'm delighted to be joined um, by Tristan, Luke and Alex today. So we're going to talk all about everything to do with um, Year 9 boy boarding at Millfield. Um, So let's kick off with um, Alex. Why did you join Millfield and what house are you currently living? So I joined Millfield because I came from a third world country where the education wasn't as good and they didn't balance sport as well. So I came in because I thought it was a perfect balance between sport and academics and uh, I currently live in Keensdale. Keensdale. And you came, what country do you live in? Barbados. Barbados. Okay, fat. And uh, how about you, Luke? Um, I first came across Millfield uh, due to a friend of my dad's who's a teacher here, but also looking at it and the pure amount of opportunities and extracurricular activities you can do and just the wide variety of sport that you can do, that really stood out to me. Okay, great. And Tristan, how about you? Um, my brother was originally at the school and then I heard about how much like sport and everything was there, so I was really keen to join. And you were also at Millfield Prep School, is that right? Um, yeah, I joined in year seven. And yeah, I started in the public school. Okay, um, so different, slightly different experience for you already having been in um, the prep part of the school and coming. Was Millfield kind of familiar to you? Had you been up here a few times? Um, yeah, I knew a few of the places, like because a few occasionally we'd come up here to do uh, like sports activities. So I knew a bit of way around the school, but not really the lessons really. Okay, but. and so is this your first time? Obviously, not for you, Tristan, but for um, Alex and Luke, is this your first time boarding? Yeah, and I think it's been a really good experience overall, especially because I come from so far away. It's been really welcoming, so I've enjoyed it so far. And what, when you first got here, um, what was it like? Did you feel any homesickness, or how did you settle in? It was a bit daunting, but like I started to think and kind of reassured myself that everyone was feeling the same thing, most of the people, even some of the people that came from the prep seeing some new people. But so I just kind of reassured myself with that after the first few days Yeah. and settled yeah. in. I'm a single child, so not being around lots of people the same age, it's quite nice to be with all those people and to talk and just chat. Like I can't do that, but um, there's so much going on. You can't really be homesick. It's it's really good because you you don't really think about it. Sometimes you do get the old like moment to yourself where you can think, oh well, there's a but like it is good. It's good. Um, was there anything that the school did when you first started to kind of help settle you in? There was the first day of activities that we did with our tutor groups. That was good. The camp on the first weekend, just everyone talking, meeting each other, telling each other where you came from sort of thing. And then sports teams are good as well with that. So, it's, yeah, it's really good. OK, great. Um, and so what boarding house, houses are there for Year 9? Um, can you just kind of tell us the options that there are for boy boarding on campus? For boys, you've got two boarding houses, Millfield House and Keensdale. Keensdale being a bit bigger. Millfield House was the first one built on campus and it's been standing since 1912, is it? Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. And whereabouts are they on the campus, Luke? So, Millfield House is like the centre of everything. It's at the top of the golf course and it is just uh, like a minute walk away from most of the classes and it's uh, like a five, six minute walk away from like the swimming pool and stuff like that. And so that's where everything revolves around. Keynes Elms is further down the hill, and that is um, by the sports pitches, junior field, and the athletics track, and the swimming pool. And so you can do lots of different things. You can meet your friends at different houses. So it's a good mix, and you can see all of the campus. Yeah. Okay, great. And so, Tristan, what, what would you say you enjoy most about boarding, do you think? What I enjoy most about boarding probably is about all the activities we all do. And even, like, it's different with the day pupils, but... The borders, like, you, they do separate activities for the borders, obviously, with your friends and gets you close with your friends and everything. And so what type of things do you do, like, of an, of an evening in-house or of a weekend? What, what would you be doing? Um, usually after prep, the, um, the main campus Astro is usually open and you can go on the fields or the nine-hole pitch and put on the golf course or go play basketball, football with friends, just whatever, for 45 minutes. OK, nice. Um, and how about um, you, Alex? What do you think you enjoy most about boarding? 
I mean, it's kind of like the five-year-old's dream to live in the house with all their friends. Obviously, it gets a bit chaotic all the time, but that's kind of the whole aura of it. It's what excites you the most. And uh, kind of having that general support from everyone around you, meeting new people, obviously, is the highlight of it, I'd say. But just that general support around you from both staff, friends, just encapsulates you and keeps you focused at all times, which I find really helpful. Is there anything you'd add, Luke? Uh, no, Alex summed it up very well. I just think, like, watching sports, like, everyone gets into it. There's always good, like, camaraderie in the common room and everyone just, it's a good environment, you know. And so, Alex, can you tell us a bit about the opportunities to represent your house? What sort of things are on offer? I mean, recently we've just had house athletics and house football. So kind of a whole school event just coming to watch kind of some unserious, just fun for fun, but also in some sense gets a bit competitive. And it's just a really good opportunity to socialise and meet people in the older years, especially in year nine. And it's just a fun event to spend your afternoon doing. Did you take part in that? Uh, no, I was getting braces that day, unfortunately. Oh, no. <laughs> and how about you? Did you both take part in that? Um, I got to take part in the house hockey, and I didn't get to take part in the house football, but the house hockey, yeah, that was good fun. Uh, and the house athletics I did do, I did the 300 metres, that was good fun. Yeah, and so everyone was there, it was a really nice day as well, the weather helps out, so yeah, it was good. Um, same with me, I took part in the house football and the house athletics, I didn't do the house hockey. I was there watching though, because um supporting my house, but no, I didn't do the house hockey. Okay, and so let's go through kind of a little bit of kind of schedule stuff. So what time do you get up in the morning, Luke? And uh, Tristan, what time do you go to bed? Um, in the morning, it kind of varies because it depends on how, if you're going to have a shower or, like, do your teeth or stuff. But you normally aim for around 6.30, so you can get changed and go down for roll call around 7.05, and then we head up to breakfast. So, yeah. yeah, I'm a bit... You, I like more my sleep a bit more, so I get up about 6.50 because <laughs> roll call's at 7.05, and then... Obviously, I have a quick shower and then get ready, head to roll call, and then would we'll head up to breakfast and then have breakfast and come back to house really and prepare for your day, really. And then after the, you've done a day of lessons and activities, um, what ta- what do you do at the end of the school day? Um, usually, lessons finish at 3.45, then usually 4 to 5 you could have an activity. It tends to be mainly sport the term, but just like stuff like on Monday would have outdoor red, Tuesday there's um, co-curricular... And then obviously Wednesday's a bit different because it's only half a day. And then for me at the moment I'm doing athletics because obviously it's summertime. And then usually I do rugby, something like that, football, sports I enjoy really, activities like that. And then so after that you go up for dinner um, and then back to house, is it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go up for dinner, back to house. I mean today I'm not going to be at dinner because I have to do a football session but... Yeah, usually they try and incorporate and always find a solution for your needs. So if you have to miss, obviously, like a class or an activity because of your sport, they always catch you up after, which I find really useful. So if you're going to miss dinner, do you get given take something care. else to eat? Yeah, get, <laughs> you, friend, have to you have to rely on your friends to get you takeaway, which is a bit of a risky business. But <laughs> Okay, and then so then after that, you might do some prep in house? Yeah, so prep goes from, I think it's like 6.15 to 7.30. And then after that, we have, we have our like, evening where it's like last bits on tech, call your parents sort of thing. Then make sure you're all ready for bed. Hand in tech at 8.30 and then lights out 9.30. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and so I understand, obviously, we take the tech in and we charge it overnight mm. for free so that you guys don't have to have it all through the night. Yeah. Do you think that's a good thing? Um, yeah, I would say so, because I think some people, they probably be staying up to like... One, two, three in the morning, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think it's good, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, okay, and so what about on the weekends? So what, what would you do on a Saturday evening and a Sunday? Weekends, I know, especially if you know about the school, that Saturday, there is Saturday school, it's only half a day, but it really makes that evening on a Saturday and that Sunday so much more rewarding. I mean, like, I've never felt such good excitement in a while than waking up on, like, a Sunday morning <laughs> just knowing that I have an entire day to myself. <laughs> So it's just really nice, especially good to get to sleep in quite a bit. No alarm, yeah. You yeah. Just have to wake up whenever you want. That's a good, best feeling. And so, what type of things do you do on a Sunday? Once you've got up, what uh, type of things do you do? Usually, well, at ten fifteen, there's a roll call in the morning. You will obviously <coughs> get up, go to that, and then about eleven fifteen, there's brunch. So you go up to brunch with your friends, and then there's another roll call at one thirty. But then between them time slots, you can do whatever. Go 
onto the rugby pitches. Usually now there's a lot of cricket, so people tend to go watch the cricket. And then after one thirty, everyone goes like, let's go down to town and street. Then maybe like go get a haircut, go to get something to eat or something like that for two, three hours or so. And most people do that and then relax for the rest of the day, really. OK, and we talked about brunch. So um, what's the brunch like and what's the food like generally? If I'm being honest, it's one of the best meals of the week because it's mm. like a compilation of just everything. So you have like hash brown cereals, uh, pastries. And it's just so good. It's full English. English. Yeah. yeah. And the general food at Millfield's really good. There's always a salad bar. There's always a second option, vegetarian, vegan. There's all the sorts of options you could ask for and all the different types of food groups that you need to have a balanced diet, especially with growing teenagers doing lots of sports. So it's a really good food. Well, school for food, yeah, it's really good. And so you have your three main meals in the dining hall. Yeah. Um, do you get any food back in-house if, if it's a bit later in the evening yeah. and you start to get hungry yeah. again? I mean, like, after prep, they like to put out talk, snacks, and you just kind of help yourself. It's a free-for-all. <laughs> <laughs> but it is usually really good. I mean, I thought, like, you know, the typical school food that you get, like a day of school, compared to here, it's just now night and day, really. It's really good. That's good to hear. Um, and so how are your rooms assigned in your houses? When you first get here, how does that work? Um, well, if you're first joining the school, the house parent will tend to put... If you're coming from the prep school, they would put you with someone new. So then, obviously, to, to like be, make friends with people. Mm-hmm. Then I assume that's the same as in Milford House. And then rooms are usually in two or one. There's, a, about, I think, about seven single rooms in the house and the rest are doubles. But then, however, in Melford House, I think there's about four, five, four people in each dorm, three people. So it's a bit different. Okay, and and you do you change with who you share with each term, or do you keep with the same people? Yeah, oh. roughly. Like you go just before the term lets out, you fill out a form, or even the yeah. week after you get back, you write down five people. I assume again, same in Melford House. And then you get to swap. Usually, if you're in your best behaviour, you'd get the person. Well, one of the options yeah. that you get. I mean, I've been lucky, yeah. so I've gone people. They said they with. guarantee you, like, at least once out of the three people you get to choose, you get at least one of the top option. And so, like, if you're a new person coming in, you, obviously you won't get your first choice because you haven't chosen anyone. But, like, I was put with Tristan first term, and having a practical kid, that's really useful because they can tell you how sort of things work and they've got that sort of knowledge about it, and so it's really good. And um, that was one of the best rooms I've had, and so you do get to make those choices, but like, you can also be in a single you choose to be in that and you just those are good as well because you can choose when you want to go to bed you don't have to wait for someone else and things like that but you know house is kept well so it's a really good place okay great and then so how 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 does prep work in the houses do you all do it together in one room or do you go and do it in separate rooms or and is it easy to concentrate so so you get sent after roll call, just sent up to your rooms. Obviously, you're trusted in that sense to get your prep done, and obviously the sanctions if you don't. I mean, standard six fifteen seven forty five. Just head down working. That's about it. And if you need any help with your prep, is there anyone you there can ask? There's anyone on duty that you can just go downstairs and ask a question yeah. too. Especially because most of our staff are teachers, so I have I know I have like one of our house mistresses and one of our house parents. Two of them I have as teachers, so I just I find it really easy. Okay, and so you obviously have your house parent and you'll have matrons in the house that are there throughout the week. Um, and then you have different teachers or sports coaches that come and do particular evenings in the house, is that yeah, how it works? So I think there's a football coach and two rugby coaches who like vary the nights that they uh, come in on their interns. They're really nice guys and they're, they're sort of younger so they can sort of bond with us and talk with us uh, a bit more like with our kids. But it is good, they're, they're really nice. Um, and the house staff themselves. Everyone's really nice, from Matron to Mr Lane, our housemaster. Yeah, everyone's really nice there. Yeah. Okay, and um, how often do you get to see your parents or your family during term time, um, Tristan? During term time, well, you can see them whenever, really. Most people tend to, um, on the weekends after school on Saturday, they tend to be like, can I have an ex yet, please? And they'll maybe go home for the weekend, or even if it's just taking your parents out, your parents taking you out on like a like a weekday or something, go to a nice restaurant or something. Yeah, you can see them whenever. So do, does that help with um, obviously when you first come, you it's natural to feel a bit homesick, but then knowing that you can see your parents every now and again on a weekend or then when the half terms come up, they come around quite quick, really, don't they? Yeah, they do, especially the amount of stuff you're doing as well. But yeah, a lot of people do get homesick. But it's really normal, especially how we're all in a newborning house. It 
it happens to everyone so yeah exactly mm. and would you how often would you speak to your parents in the week would would you phone them every day or would you message every day or would you would they be ringing you saying where are you i haven't heard from you for ages um yeah i get i get a lot of phone calls from my mum saying where are you i've not heard of you <laughs> but, I, but I, I try i try text them a lot and i tend to call them on weekends and i can have like a longer call them when i have more time but yeah, sometimes I do forget that, but... Yeah, I, I was paired of opposites when I started. I was calling them every single night for, like, the first t- half term. But then I sort of do it, like, every other night or when they're available now, but it's good. Yeah, you can speak to them whenever you want, and there's no, like... You don't feel like you're too separated because you, they're on the end of the phone, so it's good. Yeah. Obviously, I message them, like, throughout the day or whenever I get free time. But then in terms of calling, I'm same as Luke, I try to call them every other night. It's kind of boring, just day after day especially because my parents and my sister are at school and obviously my sister being like almost 13 years old you know that they just don't socialize with their parents at all so <laughs> i barely hear from her but alex living overseas um do you go home every half term holiday christmas and easter what do you do i try to i mean obviously it's not too cheap either but at least for me because i live across the Atlantic ocean but I try to, so every time I get like a week and a half break, it's kind of the minimum bar where it's like, it's worth it to come home. Otherwise I have friends nearby, family, and if my mum usually comes on business trips, so she'll be here tomorrow because she was in Paris, but so. Oh nice, so you're seeing her tomorrow. Yeah, so if she's around on a business trip, she might just spend like, if it's like a four day exit, she might just spend it with me in in London or something. Okay. Good. Um, and so, what trips have you done so far this year? Have you been away anywhere exciting? Or have you been on any day trips? I went to uh, mid half term in February. I went with the fo- a bit of the football team and the year tens to Netherlands on tour. It was like a five day tour. And it was really what it was. I mean, coming from schools that are just kind of standard, like eight to three o'clock, you've never really, ex- I've never really experienced a school trip in that sense. So flying to a whole different country with my best mates was, like, really, really fun. And it was a really, really good experience that I never thought I'd have before. You create some good memories. Yeah, yeah. it was really nice, especially because I've never been to Netherlands before. Yeah. Really um, I've been to Belgium for uh, a history trip to look at the battlefields of World War One, and that was a really good experience. I think it was three days, two nights, so that was really good. And also a day trip to the Roman Baths in Bath for a Latin trip. That was quite interesting, and we learned not then. So yeah, that's a good um, trip. I've been to Jasper in Canada over the Easter holidays for a ski trip, which was really good. Wow, it's yeah. about a week, and then yeah, it was really good. Good fun. Um, okay, and um, what would you say for somebody thinking um, of coming to a boarding school? Um, what would be your tips for a first first time boarder and um, things that they could bring? Throw yourself in. Do whatever you can keep yourself doing stuff so you don't really think about oh, what's at home you can just keep moving forward try and make as many friends as you can by doing more activities you'll do that you'll make more friends and just uh, come in with the sort of right attitude and be positive yeah um, I would say try things new because at this school they do a lot of activities which I don't I've never really seen other schools do so I try a lot of activities you don't really try before and I bet you'll like them so I mean things to bring as well as things to do Things to bring, obviously, like photos of your family and then every other thing. Just kind of standard things you have in your room. But as both Luke and Tristan said, just throw yourself in. I mean, the school's all inclusive. They cater for every need. So if you're not as good as at one sport but really good at another sport, obviously we have different teams to cooperate with that. So, I mean, and you'll never feel left out, especially if you throw yourself into these activities. I promise you, you'll never feel left out. And so when you were looking for a school to come to, um, how did you find Millfield in the first place? I was born and raised in New York, so the first idea when we kind of thought about boarding school was US, United States, because all my families lived there. It was just recently we had to move to Barbados, my father's job. But we had one friend who we knew from a Trini friend, and so we met her, she came to our house, and then she told us about how her dad went to Millfield, and I was kind of like instantly set on it, and my parents were like, oh no. Like, we were planning to send him to the US and now we're going to have to ship him all the way across to <laughs> Europe. But, I mean, I don't regret it. And I'm sure neither do they. I mean, I'm loving it so far. I'm getting good opportunities. And they know that. They're proud of it. And now my sister's coming here in two years. Fantastic. 
Um, my we just at my old school just looking through and like different schools that I could go to different opportunities and uh, my parents would go to meetings about like oh recommended schools for the son of my old school and they said not to go to Milford with one of the teachers and so then my my parents never heard of the school so then they researched it uh, looked at it my mum came for an open day really liked it but uh, me and my dad weren't able to get an open day so we asked uh, one of the house masters my dad's old friend from rugby and uh, he said he'd be happy to give us a tour. Went on it, I really loved it, every single bit of it. Um, obviously, I play a lot of sports, so I'm amazed by all the facilities and the pitches and everything. And so that really sold it to me. And then came on about a few more tours, looked at those sort of aspects of boarding and school life and loved that as well. And just, you know what, let's go for it. And really enjoyed it. It was set on it. And so, yeah, it was really good. Um, well, before I came here, I was obviously, I, was in, I joined in year seven, so I was in year six. And I, was just, I didn't really have like a main sport, then I was just into all my sports. And then my my brothers told me a lot about the school and a lot of things like you can do. And I, I just thought the sports sound really good here and, and everything. I just wanted to try all the things they have here. And then I did and then I just love rugby now. Can you tell us what the Nine at Millfield programme's all about? So obviously how we've been talking about opportunities, which seems to be this whole podcast, I mean... Co-curricular and MAP are two things that year nine students can sign up for, and it's a part of like throwing yourself into different activities. So MAP has a range of activities that I mean, I would never think I'd try in my life before, to be honest. And MAP yeah. is our term for multi-activity program, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and co-curricular is like outdoor and outdoor ed are two kind of activities that you do after school that, like, really hands-on, more practical sort of. Uh, topics and things that you do and it's really fun it's a way, good way to end the day especially after a lot of stress <laughs> yeah so maps more like sporting activities like things you'll never done like trampolining and then you've also got things you would have done like golf driving range and stuff and i think there's cadets ccf and so you've also got that that for co-curricular but you've got um photography you've got cooking you've got um community service so lots of different opportunities in that sort of aspect as well and as in map as well there's there's other activities you can do as well isn't there other than sport um yeah i believe there's like there's music you can do art drama music yeah. photography like blue planet stuff like there's even stuff like dog walking you can do stuff mm. like that yeah. yeah there's plenty of stuff so thank you so much, um, Tristan, Luke and Alex, for giving us a, an insight into what it's like to be a Year 9 um, boy boarder at Millfield. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Millfield Way podcast in conversation with Tristan, Luke and Alex. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>